So today's video, we're going to be talking about the stages of the HIV infection. So HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, and it's a retrovirus which eventually causes AIDS by infecting helper T cells of the immune system. There are two common serotypes of HIV. You have HIV-1, which has worldwide distribution, and HIV-2, which is primarily confined to Africa. HIV eventually progresses into acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is commonly referred to as AIDS. AIDS is a severe immunological disorder and results in a defect in cell-mediated immune response, and there's a greater susceptibility to opportunistic infections and certain cancers. The risk factors of HIV include unprotected sexual contact, sharing needles, the passage of the virus from an infected mother to the fetus, and infected blood transfusions. There are three stages of HIV prior to AIDS, so we're going to talk about them in today's video. So stage one is the primary HIV infection. This stage lasts for a few weeks and it may be associated with flu-like symptoms. At this stage, the diagnosis of HIV can be overlooked because symptoms may come across as the flu. There is a high amount of HIV in the blood. The immune system responds to this by producing antibodies to HIV and cytotoxic lymphocytes, and this process is known as seroconversion. At this stage, when doing a blood test, the CD4 cell and T lymphocyte count will be normal. It may be around 500 to 1,500 cells per cubic millimeter. In terms of symptoms at this stage, apart from the initial flu, there are generally no other symptoms, but there may be some swollen lymph nodes. Stage two is the asymptomatic phase, and this stage usually lasts on average for about 10 years. Generally, there are no major symptoms, but there may be some swollen lymph nodes and other clinical manifestations. This stage, although it's asymptomatic, people can still remain infectious and HIV antibodies are detectable in the blood. So an antibody test will show you a positive result. CD4 cells and T lymphocytes on a blood test should be around 500 cells per cubic millimeter, or a bit over. The symptoms and clinical manifestations at this stage can include moderate weight loss, there may be some recurrent respiratory tract infections, herpes zoster virus infection can occur, angular colitis of the mouth, oral ulcerations, seborrheic dermatitis, and fungal nail infections. Stage three is the HIV symptomatic phase, and this is where we start to see a more severe consequence to the immune system. It becomes severely damaged by HIV. There is damage to the lymph nodes and tissues. The HIV virus mutates and becomes more pathogenic, so there's more T helper cell destruction. The body can't keep up with replacing these lost helper T cells, so we eventually see the immune system start to fail and symptoms develop. Mild symptoms occur initially, but get worse. You can get multi-system diseases and infections in all of the body systems because of the reduced immune response. At this point, CD4 cells and T lymphocytes are around 200 to 499 cells per cubic millimeter. So some clinical manifestations of this stage include unexplained severe weight loss, chronic diarrhea for longer than a month, persistent oral candidiasis, or like a thrush of the mouth, unexplained persistent fever, you could develop oral hairy leukoplakia, pulmonary tuberculosis and severe bacterial infections like pneumonia or bone and joint infections, acute necrotizing ulcerative stomatitis, gingivitis or periodontitis could occur, and also anemia. The next stage after stage three is called AIDS. So I'm gonna be making a separate video on that. As soon as it's ready, it'll be listed in the description below. And we've made it to the end of the video. So leave a 100 emoji if you've made it to the end. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you.